Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Haunted Dolls and Curses video. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought I would mix this one in here. And in this case, it features an actual location. I could have sworn I've talked about this location before. It may have been just in reference to another video, like a little cameo that it made. But I double-checked all of my playlists, nothing came up, so... Let's go ahead and let's share it here. Those of you that are in Australia definitely know about this place. In fact, looking at it throughout the video here, you'll see some of the pictures associated with it. Wow, does it look amazing. But that amazingness also comes with precaution because it definitely has a curse associated with it. But it has to do with this. You're looking again at a picture of it now. It's known as the Curse of Uluru. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating info about this location. Those of you that are again local to that spot, let me know. Let me know in the comments if these curses are true, if there's any sense of dread, if there's something else happening there. Always post those comments. So here's what it says. So Uluru, otherwise known as Ayers Rock, is a gigantic, almost monolith-like sandstone formation that is there right in the center of Australia. In fact, it's so old, it's been a part of that location there, get this, around 530 to maybe 550 million years. Very, very old. I mean, this is a formation that has seen the test of time but the way you've or actually the location that you find it at a is at a place called the northern territory which is about 335 kilometers or 208 miles southwest of alice springs so again those of you that are local let me know um, what it's like there it looks very surreal like it's almost like something out of Mars, the idea that there's this flat landscape, endless flat landscape, and then there's all of a sudden this standing out, this gigantic huge thing, definitely seems otherworldly. But this place also has a very, very long tradition or culture associated with it. That's because it's sacred to, oh, this is a name, it's, it's, I hope I'm going to say it right, Pijan Pajara. Uh, Pijan Jajara, uh, again, forgive me, let me know if I'm saying it right, Pijan Jajara, which are the aboriginal people of that location, otherwise known as the Anangu. Obviously, to them, this very unique formation is very sacred because of how it looks, because of how big it is, because of what it contains. This location not only has a bunch of water holes, a bunch of caves, a bunch of springs, but also paintings. Apparently, apparently there was a bunch of people there a long time ago, again, from that location, from the Aboriginal people. In fact, some of the late, earliest known paintings date back about 10,000 years. Can you believe that? Can you imagine that? 10,000 years, they've basically been sitting there, this formation, housing people at various points. And to at least now, today, it is a natural landmark. In fact, starting around the 1930s or so, that's when it started to explode in popularity. Tourists started to come left and right, and to this day, they go to that specific spot to go see it and then also to climb it. Now, here's the thing. It's apparently a no-no to those same original people, the Anangu or the Pitjan Tajara people. You are supposed to really stay off of it. Again, they consider it a pretty sacred land, a pretty sacred spot. They, in turn, do not go on it. But for whatever reason, they still allow others to do so. Those are those same tourists that I was just mentioning. So you're going to see some pictures of people climbing this mountain and then being able to I guess, go all the way to the top. Let me know if that's the case, if you can easily do that. I have no idea, though, if those other caves and springs that I was mentioning earlier allows people to explore those as well, or if that's something that's continued a little bit of, of, of a danger. But otherwise, you can go there, and it's considered still great cultural significance to the people there, both in the past and to today, as far as the aboriginals. It's been visited, in fact, since about the 1870s or so at least with regards to some of the more modern culture, if you could call it that. Now, as far as the curses, it's this. The reason why I was talking about all that tourism, in fact, there's like a regional tourism association and others that work with 
the area there to make sure, again, that people can come by and they can go ahead and walk around and so on. You can do that, but the big problem, the one you don't want to do, is take anything from that formation. And when I say anything, I mean anything. It could be rocks. It could be pebbles. It could be boulders. If you could believe it, I was even reading that there's even smaller items like pebbles, sand, and twigs that are no-nos. Basically, nothing. Don't take anything there. If you do, here's what happens. This location will curse you. It's such hallowed ground. It's such sacred ground there that if you take anything at all from it, it's considered stolen, and then you'll have severe bad luck and great misfortune following you until you return it. It's true. Apparently, it's true. Various people, dozens, who knows, throughout the years, they've still decided to take it upon themselves to do this, to challenge that curse, or maybe they just didn't know. They had no idea that this was something that was considered a no-no. But either way, though, everyone who ends up doing it befalls that bad fortune. Again, the curse comes into play and people start experiencing very bad things. In fact, one of the last known or latest known examples was a guy by the name of Steve Hill. Apparently, he visited Uluru back in June 2017. He was told by his family, so he knew this up front, not to take any rocks, nothing at all. I think the reason why people take the rocks too is because as you can see from the colors, it's a very, very reddish hue. Definitely looks, again, like otherworldly, like something from Mars. I was just mentioning that a minute ago. Here you have something where it's so tantalizing to just grab and then see if you can keep it as a memento or something else. Well, he was warned about it, but he still did it. In his case, it was a reddish stone just a small one, like nothing really outstanding to it. And then as he was able to take it and then to go away, that's when the curse kicked in. Apparently, he had a four-wheel drive, and out of the blue, as he was driving, the four-wheel drive started to be attacked by kangaroos. He was driving home, and all of a sudden, a pack of kangaroos came out of nowhere. Sounds weird, right? Normally, kangaroos, you would think that they wouldn't attack a moving object like that, especially something that's dangerous or could be dangerous to them. But there they were. They were attacking the actual vehicle. On top of that, the engine later on almost exploded. And then also any photographs that he took from his trip slowly started to disappear from his smartphone. Isn't that crazy? He also started to get the notion that he was being haunted afterward. And so because of that, because of that string of unusual bad luck, he eventually returned that pebble or that stone back to the location. How you return it, you can actually visit again, drop it off. The idea is you're supposed to return it to the exact spot that it was taken from. So if you can do it in person, great. If you can do it with the exact location, even better. If you can't, let's say you're a tourist from another country, then what you're supposed to do is mail it back. And if you're thinking, oh, wow, well, what about giant boulders? People have mailed those. They've actually mailed them back. Who knows how they got them in the first place, like off that location and then back to wherever they went. But they've all been mailed back, and it's always with an apology letter. So many of these have happened that the Anungu people there sometimes can't keep up with the load associated of these mailed items. Isn't that crazy? The idea that so many people have taken these things, realized their error, and now these uh, poor uh, Anungu people have to essentially take care of things. On top of that, trying to find the original spots that they were taken from, that becomes a burden for them. But that's it. That's the curse, essentially. You can go visit there. You can also walk across it, walk on it. Another kind of no-no is you're not supposed to take pictures. But people obviously do like tourists, and apparently that's okay. Like there's no issues there. But again, one thing you cannot do is you cannot absolutely take anything from there. Don't even think about it. Beautiful place to visit, but extraordinarily cursed. But let me know what you guys and gals think. Again, anyone local there, anyone have any more info, let me know below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.